What's going on, Jerome's? Happy Monday. Your Minnesota Fighting Vikings are keeping star Ed Rusha Daniil, the real deal hunter, in purple, at least for 2023. Uh, as uh, on Sunday morning, it was announced that it was a, a new revised deal, one year up to worth up to 20 million bucks, 17 million base, uh, 3 million in sack incentives, and a no trade clause. And overall, I was pretty damn ecstatic where he plays a premium position. He's still in the thick of his prime, and he is easily the Vikings' best defensive player. So it, it makes sense uh, to keep him. He had the cap space, and he got that going. But I did notice th there was a lot of Vikings fans that were very upset. And if you check uh, social medias or the forums and the stuff, well, everyone's always upset on those things anyway, so I guess it's not really surprising. But there was some legit vitriol towards uh, Daniil Hunter, which – I don't understand. I really don't get it. And the whole thing is why, you know, the question is why are Vikings fans mad at Daniil? Now, we try to be, you know, we try to be objective on this channel and we're trying to see the arguments from all angles and stuff. But here's the thing like, I will never begrudge a player for trying to get his market value. Now, immediately people will be like, oh, what about Delvin? and all that stuff? 10.4 million a year was not Mar uh, Dalvin Cook's market value. Uh, it simply wasn't. Or Kirk Cousins next off season, if he tries to get up to you know 45 million bucks per year, when guys like Daniel Jones are making 40 million bucks per year, that's just the market, the market, the market. Same thing with JJ, uh, Tyreek Hill getting 30 million per year, Devontae Adams getting 28, uh, Cooper Cup getting you know 26, 27. Yes, JJ deserves uh, 30, 35 million per year. That that's the whole thing. And with Daniel. So Daniil's contract when he signed it back in 2018, the five-year, $72 million deal with $40 million guaranteed, that was an underpay from the get. And I understand Daniil wanted that long-term security immediately, but you know, like long-term deals uh, in the NFL, they're not good. And the team holds all the leverage. And it, it, we'll get into it. But uh, so the fact that his base salary ended up being $4.9 million this year, that was not the original number. Uh, the original number was around $13.5 million, but the fact that they had to revise the contract in each of the last two off seasons, pushing money from the back end, absent a new deal, that, that's what you ended up with. Uh, th that's what happened, and uh, that's uh, how it got to this spot. And I, again, I have no problem with a player using whatever leverage he has to try and get market rate, because guess what? Teams will cut a player soon as they're over market rate. That's what happens. It is the business. Uh, but I, again, I'm not going to begrudge a player for getting his in the NFL, a.k.a. not for long. And if Daniil Hunter played on his original deal, which $4.9 million base salary, 500 k in rooster bonuses, so $5.4 million in total compensation, his comp versus some of the other edge rushers in the league, so uh, edge rusher on the left, and then the percentage of what Daniil would earn versus what the other player would earn. So Daniil would be earning about a fifth of what TJ Watt uh, is raking in a per average per season, about 20% of Joey Bosa, 22% of Miles Garrett, uh, around slightly less than a quarter of what the corpse of Khalil Mack is bringing in with the Chargers, uh, a quarter of Bradley Chubb, a quarter of Bradley freaking Chubb. And every single day and twice on Sunday, I'm taking Daniil over Bradley Chubb. Just is what it is. Uh, making a quarter percent uh, of what Trey Hendricks is, Ch Hendrickson is making. Hendrickson? Hendricks? Oh, whatever. Uh, as well as you know, a third of Landry, a third of Cam Jordan. And also, I mean, hell, even on his own team, Marcus Davenport, the one-year $13 million deal, uh, Daniel are earning uh, – Marcus Davenport earning about two and a half times more than Daniel Hunter this season. That doesn't sit right. And also, including the rookies. I mean, uh, former number one overall pick, Trevon Walker, uh, Daniil making around 60% of what Walker makes. In fact, if Daniil was stuck on his $5.4 million compensation, there would be seven siete rookies on their rookie deal uh, that made more per season than Daniil Hunter, which that's not market rate. And you know, just because you have a, an advantage doesn't mean that it's within your right to just completely squeeze them. Where the Vikings could have took this to the mat, I think it speaks to team culture uh, that Quasey and ownership and Kevin O'Connell uh, took care of one of their own, uh, a guy who's the best defensive player, a guy who's a team leader, a guy that plays a premium position on the edge and is going to earn it. He, he will. And you know, his $20 million bucks per season uh, ties him for eighth in the league right now in terms of edge rusher compensation. And I think that is more than fair, uh, especially if it's just a one-year deal uh, and also you look at Harrison excuse me D 
Captain Neal nailed it, uh, over the last two seasons. Uh, so 2021, uh, he played in seven games, uh, missed the rest with that torn pec, uh, but that didn't crop up again. And also he had six sacks, uh, so that doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, and 2022, 18 games, including the playoffs, 11 and a half sacks, including one in the playoffs. Uh, so that averaged out to beep, pop, up, a boop, 17 and a half total sacks, a uh, 0.7 per game, which was eighth in the NFL during that time span. Uh, and 107 total pressures, uh, around four and a quarter a game, which is uh, around ninth in the league over those last two seasons. So Daniil, despite playing in a dated and moribund uh, defense with Zimmer in 2021 and having to learn a new scheme uh, on a defense that wasn't blitzing, that wasn't generating their own pressure last year with Donichel, it's pretty damn amazing. And again, we're, we're trying to objectively look at this argument from all sides. So why would fans be mad? I guess, number one, it does take up salary cap. The Vikings uh, had around $18 million in cap space, and now that a number for Daniil greatly increases. And TBD, if it's going to be all on this year, on the chin, probably a couple void years added in, so kicking the can. Also, the third redo in a row, uh, where two off seasons ago with Spielman, uh, they, they redid his contract. Same thing with last off season with the roster bonus, and now they did it for the third time. And you know, there, there's a whole contingent the fans that say you know honor the contract but i i do subscribe to you know the meta theory that your word is your bond absolutely but in the nfl it, it is different so the player has to honor the contract that they sign but the team can rip up the contract at any point including if there's guaranteed money left and you know they could tear it up for well Usually the player deserves it, but uh, the the team can tear it up for uh, conduct detrimental to the team and and all that stuff. So how come it's not a two-way street, that that whole thing? And it it does come down to, like, the salary cap is so weird because it makes the average fan, you know, Joe 12-pack, side with the billionaire owners versus the millionaire players. I mean, any time a player wants a little bit more money as like, well he signed the contract all that stuff uh he's he's a villain because he's taking away money from the pot he's taking away money from the kitty that the team has to spend by the way whatever uh and, and then but if a player underperforms his contract you go you go you go all that i mean it's just such a weird dynamic it is and then fans are mad at hunter's 2020 2021 injuries the tor- uh torn pack in 2021 which again could happen to anyone and then herniated disc that cost him all the 2020 season. And uh, the neck is fine. He played in all 18 games last year. The pec is fine. So he showed that he's healthy. He's still in his prime at 28. Going to be 29 in October. And I, I, the, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, there, there's some fans that are still mad that Daniil got paid for 2020. When he herniated his, the disc in his neck, he broke his freaking neck, uh, going hard in training camp practice under uh, you know the Zimmer regime, trying to win games for your stupid team. And then all of a sudden, he's like, that guy doesn't deserve to get paid. All the, all right, so yeah, if a player tears an ACL, misses a full season, he shouldn't get paid. Oh, well, at my job, workers comp. Hmm? Like again, honor the contract. That's part of the contract, injury guarantees and all that stuff. And it, it's it's really just frustrating. It, it is, or yeah, you know, just a complete out of left field example. Like, uh, would people are people mad that Demar Hamlin got paid the rest of his contract last year? No. No, because that would be uh, obtuse and very stupid and insensitive. And same thing with Daniil Hunter. Uh, but also, uh, fans could be mad at trade value. Because I think in a vacuum, Daniil's trade value would have been roughly a Bradley Chubb, a first and a fourth, a first and a third. And you can use that trade capital to find your quarterback in the future. Now, uh, since Daniil has a no tag clause for next offseason, the Vikings can't tag and trade. And if he does leave in free agency, the best the Vikings are probably going to get is a 2025 uh, third-round compensatory pick, which they'll have to wait for, right? So... I, I'm a two minds of this. Number one, what if the, the market wasn't there? Because, uh, again, in a vacuum, that's Daniil's value. But, I mean, maybe teams are set. Maybe they didn't want to spend the cap. Maybe they're good to go on the edge. And maybe the market wouldn't have presented itself. And would you have been happy if Quasey settled for a third-round pick? No. No. So, it, it, it was a, a lose-lose all the way around in that spot. But I, I do think that the revision of the Daniil contract is a win-win. Uh, again, at the end of the day, you still have one of the best edge rushers in the game, a guy who is scheme agnostic, a guy that can play both sides, a guy that can get a pass rush from the close side of the field, the left side, strong side, and he's still in his prime. I mean, what more do you want? And also, $20 million a year in total compensation for a top-flight edge rusher is not a lot. It, it isn't. And no, paying Daniil does not impede them from extending Jefferson or extending Hawkinson or extending Darisaw next offseason or maybe even bringing Kirk back. It doesn't. It, it simply does not. So uh, stop, being, stop being mad at Daniil. 
I mean, it's just so weird, but I mean, that, that's sports. I mean, people get mad, they get bitter, they uh, dig in on a side and then they don't flinch. It's, it's whatever. Whatever, man. Anyways, uh, why are some Vikings fans mad at Daniil and his new contract? Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull, production value.